So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm uh, Olivier Vitas from the European Space Agency, STEC in the Netherlands. I'm the project scientist of the JUICE mission, the Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer mission. Uh, we launched next year the spacecraft, so I thought it was a good opportunity to tell us what are our, our plans for the cruise phase, which is a very interesting phase of the mission. So just a quick recap on the scientific topics of the JUICE mission. So we have two main topics. We'll explore the Jupiter system in detail. So the atmosphere, the magnetosphere, um, the moon system, the ring, the dust. And we are also going to explore in detail the, the habitable world around a gas giant. And the focus will be on Ganymede, the largest moon of the solar system. Uh, because of its uh, subsurface ocean and its internal magnetic field which make this uh, body a very interesting target. We are going also to explore uh, Europa, in particular its active zones on the surface, and Callisto to complete the picture to see how uh, different are all these moons and uh, whether they are a hospitable place for life around uh, the Jupiter. Before we go there, we need to, uh, to launch the spacecraft and we need to travel in the solar system for a few years. And I'm going to explain this phase now. So we launch in uh, August, September 2022. We cannot go directly to Jupiter because JUICE is a very heavy spacecraft and the Ariane 5 launcher is powerful but not powerful enough. So we have to use the planet uh, in the solar system to get some energy and to reach Jupiter. So we have planned five gravity assists as you will see in the, in the animation. So first, one year after launch, there will be a very interesting uh, gravity assist flyby uh, with a Moon-Earth flyby. We will skim the Moon surface at 300 kilometers. That will be a very interesting flyby. Then there will be another Earth flyby, followed by a Venus flyby, followed by a, another Earth flyby. At some point, we may uh, decide to, uh, to fly by an asteroid and there will be a final Earth flyby in January 2029 and then two and a half years to, to finally reach Jupiter. Again, in the last part of the cruise, we may uh, be able to, uh, to make an asteroid flyby. We will decide that later. And at the end of the cruise phase, so six months before arriving at Jupiter, we'll in fact start what we call the nominal mission and we'll switch on all the instruments and we'll start to make scientific measurements. So observe Jupiter from, uh, from far away, uh, make in situ observation in the solar wind. And in fact, we are going to start the mission at this phase. Uh, just before arriving at orbit at Jupiter, there will be a, a Ganymede flyby to help uh, for, the, for the capture by the Jupiter gravity field. And then the Jupiter orbit insertion, as you can see in this animation. And then we'll start the, the nominal tour of Jupiter, but that's another story. So the priorities of the cruise phase are first the navigation, of course, we need to reach Jupiter. And we need to arrive at Jupiter with a well-functioning spacecraft and well-functioning instrument. So we are going to, uh, to make a regular check out of the instrument twice per year to check if uh, everything is going fine. And we, uh, the goal is also to make some um, calibration of the instrument during the cruise phase. In terms of science, we have a lot of uh, ideas. I will come back to that later and we'll perform this scientific measurement uh, if it's possible, of course. In terms of spacecraft safety, the main driver is the thermal constraint because JUICE is designed to work in the Jupiter system where it's cold and in the inner solar system in particular when we fly by Venus, uh, the conditions are not optimum for JUICE. So we are, we are going to protect the spacecraft from the solar radiation with the large gain an, uh, high gain antenna that you can see on this picture. So the spacecraft will be pointed to the sun with the antenna and we have some limited pointing capabilities, of course, that limits uh, what we can do with the spacecraft. And in addition, given the thermal constraint, we cannot operate all the instruments uh, at the same time. We have some other constraint. We have, uh, uh, due to the limited uh, resources, we are going only to be in contact with the ground station only once per week. Therefore, we have some limited data volume also uh, that we can retrieve on ground during this cruise phase. And in addition, uh, we have small uh, operation team, of course. I mean, the nominal mission will start uh, in 2031 and we cannot have the full uh, teams operating during the cruise phase. So we have limited number of people that will limit the, the capabilities in terms of science uh, with the spacecraft. 
So what science uh, we would like to perform during the cruise phase? Uh, the first obvious opportunity will be the planetary flyby, so four flybys at the Earth, including one with the Moon, and one at Venus. And of course, we expect that we'll be taking some very interesting uh, measurement during those flybys, including images, geophysical instrument, and in situ observations. We have the possibility to, uh, to perform one or two asteroid flybys. We are studying that at the moment. So we need to find interesting target. And we need to see whether uh, we can afford to spend a bit of uh, propellant to fine tune the trajectory to make a flyby. So that we will decide after launch. But that's an interesting opportunity, of course. Heliophysics measurement, measurement, in situ measurement in the solar wind. Uh, that will be also quite interesting. Uh, and that uh, we can do that with our in-situ instrument. Dust measurement with the radio wave instrument and maybe with our big solar panels. Another opportunity will be to uh, when uh, the Sun is between Juice and Earth uh, with our radio science investigation, we will have the opportunity to test uh, the general relativity. Similarly to what has been done with Cassini and Bepi Colombo, so we can uh, continue this kind of very interesting measurement. With our radio wave instrument, we can also uh, measure the cosmological radio background, another interesting opportunity, and observe Jupiter from large distance, radio emissions to take images. In terms of activities with the team, so I often get the questions, what are you going to do during this long cruise phase? Uh, we are going to be very, very busy. First, we have to publish a collection of, uh, of articles about the mission, the instrument, the spacecraft just to document for the community our mission. We have to make a decision whether we perform an asteroid flyby. That will depend on the launch performance, the fuel that we have on board, and which asteroids are at which, uh, given the, the juice trajectory. We have to prepare the, the instrument checkout twice per year. We have to prepare the planetary flybys and all the possible scientific observations. That always takes some time in preparation. Once we have the data on ground, we, have, we need to analyze, to perform the instrument calibration, to analyze the data from the scientific point of view, to publish, to archive. Uh, we have also to fine tune the trajectory of the spacecraft uh, after we reach Jupiter. So for all the flybys of the Europa, Callisto and Ganymede moons and the Ganymede phase. And we need to freeze the trajectory three years before arriving at Jupiter for the, for the planning to have the best possible uh, trajectory in the Jupiter system. So we have to prepare four or five years of, of missions, including the flybys, the perigovi measurement of the magnetosphere, the Ganymede phase, and that takes a lot of time in preparation. So the idea that when we are there, we are ready with the top level analysis of the trajectory, that that means we know more or less what we are going to do depending on the mission phase. And we need to have also some precise ideas about some specific building blocks like a Europa flybys or the Ganymede phase at the end. So we are, we are going to prepare that during the, the cruise phase. Also, we need to think about the scientific analysis of the data. Once the data are on ground, uh, all the juice team will work together. So how best to combine the data set uh, to take the best out of the mission. So we need to make sure that everybody has a common understanding of the JUICE mission, the, the how the instrument operate, which science we are going to do together. And that takes al always of some time. We need to talk together to prepare that very actively. And that takes some time. And the cruise phase is a very good opportunity uh, to prepare this, uh, this scientific data analysis. Also, we need also to, uh, to prepare the coordination with ground-based observations. It's always useful to get the view from the Earth so with telescopes like uh, Webb uh, or the ELT. So that's need also some, uh, some coordination, some preparation. And we constantly need to, uh, to get the new people on board uh, in the teams, uh, new members, early career scientists, uh, new guest investigator, potentially new interdisciplinary scientists, and that also need to, to prepare this, uh, how we get uh, new people on board. So you see, we are not going to be bored, and I look already forward to this, uh, to this phase. The spacecraft is being tested at the moment. Next year, we launch. If you want to get more information, we have our web pages, we have the Twitter account. You can follow us also on YouTube with the Making of Juice movie. Uh, you have my email in contact uh, for the contact if you need. So stay tuned, thanks for your interest, uh, your enthusiasm, and we keep in touch. Thank you very much.